Today I'm diving into six crucial lessons learned throughout my career as a structural engineer. I'll be revealing strategies on how to tackle these challenges or avoid them altogether. The first lesson is on navigating the ups and downs of work in the construction industry. Working in the construction field can feel like riding a roller coaster. There are times when work piles up and other times when it slows down. You're constantly juggling different clients, each with their own timeline. When this balance gets tricky, it can lead to burnout for structural engineers. Finding the right rhythm is like solving a puzzle to keep the workload just right. You have two approaches to tackle this challenge. First approach, during busy times, you hustle like a pro, and during quieter times, you enjoy yourself and do things at your own pace. The second approach reminds me of the ant and the grasshopper fable. In the story, the ant is diligently working during the summer, collecting and storing food for the winter months. In contrast, the grasshopper spends the summer enjoying the sunshine and singing, dismissing the ant's industrial behavior. As winter arrives, the grasshopper finds itself hungry and cold, while the ant comfortably enjoys the food it stored earlier. The moral of the story emphasizes the importance of foresight, hard work and preparation for the challenges that lie ahead. It teaches us the value of being responsible and planning for the future rather than relying solely on the present moment. And the reason I'm telling you this story is that you can use the quiet times to optimize your workflow and get ready for the busy times. The first approach works best if you have already your workflow optimized. So choose what suits best your situation. And this leads us to my second lesson, which is optimize your workflow. Optimizing your workflow is a key ingredient for success and efficient time management is the cornerstone of this process. Engineers can enhance their workflow by adopting strategic planning and prioritization. So here's my process. For every project, I begin by breaking down larger tasks into manageable steps, creating a roadmap that guides me through the project. So for example, when I'm designing a house, I ask questions to the architect and builder. I start marking up the preliminary design, which will include bracing, framing, I highlight load bearing walls, I add point loads on non-load bearing walls, I specify member sizes, I show wet areas, I make a list of connections. If it's a generic connection, I check it to verify if it's suitable. If it's not a generic connection, I will design and sketch it. I'll do the footing sizing reinforcement, slab reinforcement, trimmers, steps, wet areas, founding materials. And then finally, I'll send to the client for a review before I proceed with drafting. So for every project, I create a roadmap that will guide me through them. And I also have standard emails for each type of task. One email for sending projects out, one email for questions, one email for fee proposals, and standard emails for every recurrent activity. And you can also optimize your workflow by using productivity tools and technology to streamline repetitive tasks and reduce manual effort. And lastly, regularly assess and refine your workflow, learning from each project to fine tune your process continually. The third lesson, I like to call it the builder engineer syndrome. You probably heard this phrase before. I've been building this way for 20 years and never fell off. Well, my friends, I call this the builder engineer syndrome. Just because a house is standing today does not mean it will be standing tomorrow. Houses are generally designed to handle the worst winds expected every 50 years. That wind could happen in 100 years or tomorrow. The solution for this problem is not that simple, but involves your ability to explain complex engineering principles in a way that non-structural engineers can understand. In other words, you have to be able to explain complex systems by using simple terms. And this does not only apply to builders with the engineer syndrome. 
but also to any individual without a structural engineering background. Remember, you are as good as you can communicate. If you are in a meeting with other consultants and you cannot turn a structural engineering talk into simple stories, no one will get it and you will end up looking a bit puzzled yourself. So my advice is break it down and keep it simple. The fourth lesson is a tricky one and kind of reminds me of this funny internet meme. There's a price list that it says, we design everything $500. We design you watch $800. We design you advice $1,000. We design you help $1,500. You design we help $2,000. You design we advise $3,500. You design we watch $5,000. You design everything, $7,500. This one doesn't happen a lot, but I thought I would add it to the list. Imagine some clients wanting to take over your job. Yeah, that is a thing. Now, it's super crucial that you've got the skills to set boundaries and assure the client that you are the expert they can trust. From what I've seen, these clients are pretty picky and like doing things their way with their favorite materials and methods. And that's why they might try to get all hands on with your job. Your mission is to let them know you will deliver a project that matches their skills and makes them feel at ease. And this could even be another lesson in itself. Understand your client's expertise. To illustrate, let's use a simple example. If your client happens to be a steel fabricator, it wouldn't make sense to propose a structure primarily composed of timber. Or maybe you want to innovate and design a prefab house to be constructed in one week, but your builder might prefer to build it in stick frame in six months. So knowing your client's background ensures that your designs align with their specialized knowledge and preferences. The fifth lesson is all about finding the right balance. Don't rely too much on software, but make sure you understand how to use any 3D software effectively. You've probably heard this a lot and that's because it's super important. I'm in a few engineering groups on Facebook and WhatsApp and it's surprising how many engineers share software results that just don't make any sense. Technology can be amazing, especially when it comes to designing complex structures and automating processes. But you must be able to check if the results make sense. On the flip side of this issue, I've encountered individuals who are completely unfamiliar with using any 3D software. They lack knowledge about releases, supports, or even the basic functions of 3D software. You don't need to be an expert in any particular software because who knows, tomorrow you might be using a different one. However, it is crucial to have a solid understanding of the fundamentals of any software. And last but not least, the sixth lesson delves into change to the scope of a construction project. We've all been there. One week away from a project deadline and your client gives you a ring wanting some minor tweaks to the car park. Suddenly, columns need shifting. Two days later, another call. A few details in the architectural drawings need adjustments. Before you know it, your inbox has an email with the updated drawings and the cycle continues. Every amendment to the project translates into additional time and money. The challenge arises when these amendments come in as seemingly harmless incremental change. You've heard that before. It's only a small change. However, when you add up the extra time spent, they can turn the project unprofitable. So it's crucial to track these revisions, document change via emails, and openly address the impact on the budget and timeline. Don't shy away from speaking up, but at the same time, be cautious not to jeopardize the relationship with the client. I've been actively focusing on my personal and professional growth lately, discovering some fantastic ways to become the best engineer and a better version of myself. If you want to know more about that, watch this video here where I share these insights. Click here to watch and I look forward to seeing you there.